Hello guys, this is the next Anatomy and Physiology screencast which we are starting to deal with a new topic called Biomechanics and there will be two screencasts regarding this. This is the first one and in this one we're just going to be discussing what we call motion and force. Alright, if we kick off with motion then essentially this guy called Isaac Newton, you might have heard of him um, created some laws that defined motion and how motion works. So we have what's called linear motion. This isn't one of the laws by the way, this is just a general term of motion called linear motion. And this is when a body moves in a straight or curved line with all its parts moving the same distance in the same direction at the same speed. So everything is moving the same. And when we talk about a body we can mean an object or a person. So it could say when a person moves in a straight line or when an object moves in a straight line, etc. Good example of this is a bobsled. So a bobsled will run in a straight or curved line moving at the same distance. Everybody inside it and the bobsled itself is moving at the same speed at the same time. The second aspect you need to know about is what we call angular motion. And this is where a body, so again a person or an object, or part of a body, so it could be an arm or a limb, moves in a circle about an axis of rotation. So a good example of this is a wheel. So if we look at wheelchair racing, David Weir here, the wheel itself will have a centre point and the wheel rotates around that central axis. That's what we call angular motion. A good example again would be a discus thrower. If you looked at them from a top down view, sort of bird's eye view, they rotate around a central point before they release the discus. And that will be called angular motion again. The third type of motion is called general motion, general motion. And this is a combination of linear motion and angular motion. So basically going straight and operating around an axis. A really good example of this is, is someone who's bowling in cricket. So they take the run up, the approach, is, is it, they're moving in a straight line, same speed, same distance. The same time the limbs are working, so their limbs are rotating around an axis. And then as they throw the cricket ball, the limbs will rotate again and the ball itself could be spinning around an axis. So that's a combination of both linear motion and angular motion. You might need to go over these a couple of times in this screencast just to get a feel of what those things are but you will need to know what linear, angular and general motion are. Now on top of this Newton discovered and wrote several laws and we need these laws to sort of discuss the idea of force. So the first law Newton came up with was the law of inertia and this word inertia means the reluctance of a body to change its state of motion. So basically it means something st stabilising or something being very still. And he, he writes, a body continues in a state of rest or uniform velocity unless acted upon by an external force. That means a, a ball or a body or an object is very still until a force pushes it to make it move. And a good example of this from sport is in tennis. So just before the tennis uh, players serve, they have the body, which is the ball, is at rest. It's still within the palm of their hand. And then they might move their hand to push the ball upwards, which is a force. So the force of them moving has made the ball move. But until that time, the, the ball stays still. Another good example would be the ball flat still on a on a penalty spot in football or rugby if you're kicking a conversion when it's put on the tee it still stays in place that's the law of inertia the second law from Newton was the law of association and this reads when a force acts upon an object the rate of change of momentum experienced by the object is proportional to the size of the force and takes place in the direction in which the force acts Essentially then, any movement experienced by the object is proportional to the size of the force and takes place in the direction that the force acts. 
So that might be a lot of mumbo jumbo to you guys, but essentially what that means is if an object moves, it moves because a force pushes against it. And how far an object moves dependent on how much of a force is pushed against it. Okay? So if we just take the analogy of the tennis player again, if a tennis ball is still and you hit the tennis ball, it's however hard you've hit it is the force is how far the tennis ball will move, okay, which is the movement experienced by the object. Another good example here is in baseball or strike and fielding game. Although that ball is moving, the force is coming from the baseball player's bat and his body, and when that force is exerted or pressed onto that ball, the ball will move in a direction according to the weight of the player and the bat pressing against it. So that is the force pushing against the object. Okay, Newton wrote one more law that we need to know about, which we just call the third law, and this one states for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. You might have heard that a few times, not necessarily with to do with sport or force. So when you get an object colliding with another force, there will be an equal and opposite reaction exerted by the second object on the first object. So basically if you get a if you get a ball and it collides with something such as the wall, you've got the force of the ball coming in as well as the force of the wall pushing against it and therefore there is an equal and opposite reaction in terms of the force being applied. Good example of this is, for example, you're playing football and you hit the ball against the crossbar. The crossbar is one force. The ball moving in one direction has been forced to do that. It hits the bar and it just rebounds back because the force moving off the crossbar changes the ball's direction sometimes or pushes against that ball to give an equal and opposite reaction. Again, you will need to make sure you understand these very clearly before you come into the lesson, as well as linear, angular and general motion. Make good notes, bring questions to the lesson, and we'll discuss this a bit further.